Welcome to Voice Rising with Cara Johnstad. Enjoy weekly conversations with leading luminaries, pioneering visionaries, singers, poets, musicians, and sound healers as we explore the profound role our voice plays on the path to self-realization and global enlightenment. The internationally acclaimed singer, composer, author, healer, recording artist, voice expert, creator of Voice Your Essence, and founder of the School of Voice, Kara Johnstad uses her extraordinary spiritual gifts to empower others. Everything in this world vibrates. Everything has a frequency. A pioneer in the field of voice work and transformational songwriting. Her breakthrough methods are helping thousands of people worldwide fine-tune their body-mind-spirit system and unlock the energetic frequencies of limitless creativity, health, and abundance. Share your voice, ask your questions, join in the conversation. Receive life-changing, positive transformation and rise together to create a sound world. And here's your host, Kara Johnstad. Hello, everybody. I am Cara Johnstead, and this is Voice Rising, where each week we dive into the big questions on how we, as a humanity, can fine tune our body, mind, spirit system, and heal through sound consciousness. We explore the questions which role does our voice play in shifting old paradigms and awakening to a vibrant life of pure presence? And today I have in the studio with me the world-renowned musician, composer, educator, producer, and peace activist Yuval Ron with us. And he's going to talk with us about divine attunement and sound consciousness and the role music and frequency has in attaining world peace. So welcome, Yuval, to the studio. Thank you. Welcome Very today. Yeah. Good to be with you, Cara. Thank you for having me. I understand it's early in Los Angeles, early morning, so you must feel like a, a bird this morning as we're about to go into our talks. <laughs> I, I usually <laughs> uh, work at this time in my studio. I'm not used to uh, talk that, that early. Uh, it's a great time for uh, composition and contemplation. You know, the, the morning time is wonderful for meditation, for yoga, and um, and for composing. Uh, and that, that's what I like to do in the early um, morning uh, time. So my uh, speech centers in my brain are, are usually not stretching and, and active <laughs> in this time, but but I'm happy to talk with you and uh, and to share. Uh, what we we I you know we both are interested in is, is sound and uh, and spirituality. Right. So, so let's dig in. Okay. I'm I've been listening to your music over the last months, and I'm incredibly touched by its depth and profound healing abilities. I actually have fallen in love with a track called Wood, and I've been using oh, yeah. it to yeah to. Um, with a lot of singers to mm -hmm. I, I do I've developed a method called voice yoga and it's just been accompanying me and I've been reading also a lot of interviews and I'd like to start with one question which is what's one of the strongest memories that you had as a child that with music and discovering the power of your true voice was was there a moment that that um. was like that's a strong memory that you just remembered how how powerful music is. Yes, there, there's several um, memories. Uh, one, um, I remember when I was about 17 and I traveled to the Sinai Desert, mm -hmm. and in, which is in between Egypt and Israel. Back uh, when I was 17, it was part of Israel, and now it's part of Egypt. And it's the mystical place that the Israelites wandered for, 40 years in the desert with Moses, and that's where the Ten Commandments were mm -hmm. given on Mount Sinai. Uh, so it's a very special place, and uh, I went there to spend time with the Bedouins, with the native tribes. And I, at that time, I played uh, guitar. I had my guitar with me, and I went with one friend to this uh, unknown dunes that we never been in, and the, at that time there were no roads. There were no buildings. There was just sand and sand and sand. And we 
uh, dependent on the native people, the Bedouins, to uh, chaperone us, take us uh, in their trucks and on their camels, and we, we reached their oasis in that desert. And it was at night. I, I, we arrived at night. Everything was dark. There was no lights. There was just one pit fire on the dunes, and I couldn't see the faces of the people around. Mm -hmm. And I had my guitar, and I sat near the fire. I was 17, and I started playing songs, you know, Beatles songs and Bob Dylan songs and Led Zeppelin and, and everything that I played in high school, Jimi Hendrix. I played some classical music. I played some you know, Bach. And... In the desert, when there's, there are no roads, no cars, no factories, the sound travels very far. And mm -hmm. so people heard the sound throughout that whole area, and people gathered around me. And I couldn't see who they were, but there were many people gathering around the fire and around the, the music. And the Bedouins brought their instrument, which is uh, an oud, which is the Middle Eastern lute, which is the grandfather mm -hmm. of the guitar. And they started jamming with me, and um, and one of them played the drum, and we played through the whole night. And in the morning, after a very few hours of sleep, I woke up, and then there was light. And people from all over came to me, and some of them were English, some of them were German, some of them were uh, from Finland, from Denmark, mm -hmm. and uh, France and from Israel and from Egypt, and they were all walking, traveling through the desert, and uh, and the Bedouins, and they all came to me and said, "Oh, you played last night. It was so beautiful." And everybody were my friends. Everybody were my family. We were all connected by that simple, simple experience of making music together. And and at that moment, I realized how powerful. Uh, music is to uh, cross boundaries, to bring people from different nation nationalities and lands and ethnic and religious and spiritual traditions all to come together and to agree on something or to have a harmonious collective communal experience that uh, make everybody feel good and everybody, because of that, felt connected and close. Um, there was no need for introduction. There was no need for words. Right. Uh, and, and so that was a trans transforming experience that I experienced when I was 17. Uh, that's one of my early uh, memories. And, and since then, throughout my so 35 years career in music around the world, I've I've seen this happen again and again and again and again and again, many, many, many times. Yeah, that's so true. And I often say that like all the songwriters that you were talking about, which I think you're not the only one who's, you know, sang the Bob Dylan and the, the Beatles and everything. And it is a, a it's just quite a, a wondrous event when one, it doesn't matter if one's in the desert or in a hotel bar in Tokyo, and one sings the first few mm -hmm. lines of any of these songs, everybody carries music and memories and, and many songs that we know in their bones with them and you can be yeah. sitting in a you, know, you can be sitting in the desert or you can be sitting in a train station and sing just the line da -dee -da -dee -da -da, right and then suddenly it's everyone's oh i know that and yeah um yeah it's it's really magic the music is very magical that connecting force so i have heard the name yuval actually for the very first time while i was uh was um diving into music and I discovered it means stream brook mm -hmm. tributary right. I'm a I always feel like a river when I'm writing a lot of music and you can correct me if I'm wrong but I you just said that the oud is the grandfather to the guitar and I also read that it was mentioned in the um, the name was mentioned in the Hebrew Bible in the book of Genesis and was Yuva was the father of the man who played stringed instruments, like the harp, is that true? Is right. that right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. So, and... so, yeah, my name is is mentioned in a you know, obscure chapter in the Hebrew Bible, 
yeah. uh, and Yuval was the, the 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 father of all musicians, the father of the, the first musicians mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. It says that Yuval was the, right. the the first master, the first father of that uh, lineage of musicians. And my parents didn't know they. It's it's kind of in contemporary Hebrew. Uh, people just know that Yuval means a, a brook, a creek, and our, mm-hmm. uh, a water vessel. But in in biblical time, it has that name that uh, many people don't know because it's in a, in an obscure chapter that nobody reads because it's all genealogy and it's a very boring bo- uh, chapter that in Genesis right. that has no no story, no no drama, just names, 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 and. One thing is mentioned about uh, that uh, character Yuval. So I found I found it out when I I bumped into that chapter when I was 19. Uh, it's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of wondering, like, do you think that it was charted in the stars? I, you know, I mean, I'm also a, a mother, so these names simply uh-huh. come to us mysteriously. And I thought, was that charted yeah. in the stars that you're going to go on to play the oud? <laughs> Right? I mean, I was like... Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. And, and water is very important. Uh, both music and water are important uh, for me and in my mm-hmm. character. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's not a coincidence. And, and my last name, Ron, means singing in happiness. So it has to do with ah. music. Joy, joyful singing, and that means Ron. Uh, Ron in Hebrew. Uh, so... Uh, I, I I I have I have the, the music both in my first name and my last name, and I'm the the first musician in my family. There was no other musician yeah. before me. Now my yeah. kids, my two kids, play a lot of music, um, mm-hmm. and our our home is full with music instruments, of course. And uh, music is my life. But when I grew up, it wasn't uh, the case. Uh, none friends or or, or my family relatives were professional musicians or or doing music even um in a community orchestra so it was Mm -hmm. um i found uh i followed my heart you know when i when i the first time i encountered music was with a classical guitar that uh, my mother took me to take a lesson when i was 11 and the first time i heard that the teacher strum the open strings of the guitar I just felt, oh, it was so beautiful. And it was nothing. It was just the open strings of the guitar. There was mm-hmm. no song, nothing. Just the simple sound of the strings mm-hmm. uh, impressed me a lot. Uh, so I find my home. You know, it's really my, mm-hmm. uh, my promised land, as I, as I tell my students. Uh, and I, I was lucky to find it when I was uh, young, when I was 11. And, uh, and it stayed with me. I stayed with it all those years. Right, yeah. So there's a lot of been there's a, there's been a lot of journeying or a lot of voyaging in your life, right? So you've I mean you obviously yes. grew up in Israel and now you're living in the United States, but also looking at all your tours, you do a lot of traveling, you do a lot of bringing the the power and the beauty of music and that cross cultural. Um, I don't actually like the word peace activism, although it's beautiful to be active for peace. But we are peace. I, I always, I always think that we have to remember our true nature, our true quality, that and just start living that. But I did see that you have a new release called Voyage Through the Chakras, and it yes. it, it looks like a very interesting balance because everybody or most of the people here in the at Voice Rising, they know what guided meditations are, and many people also know what you know beautiful instrumental music is. But you obviously um, connected. You have two. It's a double album, as far as I can tell, right? It's yes. a double album. So one part yes. is really with voice, guiding people through a voyage through the chakras, and the other one is so that the people can experience perhaps their own inner voice as they listen to the music and as they're guided through their chakra system. And maybe yes. you want to share with the listeners, for some of them, maybe they don't know what chakras are, what is, you know, what made you decide to do this album? And, um, yeah, and what is the sure. chakra yeah. for you? Or what is chakra? Yeah, the, yeah the chakra, chakra uh, is, is, an, is a name from Sanskrit, and it comes from uh, the, the tradition of 
Mother India, in ancient time, the, the master yogis recognized that there's seven centers of energies in the body, and chakra mm -hmm. means will, a wheel. It's mm -hmm. a circle. It's a, it's a circle of center of energy. So the energy, energy turns in circles in those seven spots. And now modern medicine have, have shown that there are kind of nerve centers. There, there's concentrations of nerves uh, in those spots that the yogis uh, call the chakras. So it's very interesting how modern science is now confirming the ancient knowledge of the Hindus. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, the chakras uh, start from the base of the, the spine, and they they are <clears throat> located in seven spots up the spine all the way to the top of the head. And each center of energy has different quality. And so uh, there are many, many chakra meditations from ancient times till today, but uh, what I try to do here is to have... 10 minutes for each chakra where uh, a wonderful uh, actress from uh, Los Angeles, she's a British actress named Lucinda Clare. Lucinda has traveled to India many times and she studied in India and she's a yogi in addition to be an actress that does voiceovers for Disney movies and she, she has a beautiful voice. And so she wrote uh, the guided meditations which is very poetic. It's not technical, um, it's not dry uh, instructions, it's very poetic, it's really more uh, what people call guided imagery. So she guides the listener to imagine different images that invoke the qualities of the seven chakras. And I, my task was to compose music for each of the chakras, guided meditations. Uh, that invoke the qualities of the chakras. So, for example, the second chakra, which is in the groin area, the second chakra is the sacral chakra, which has to do with flow. It's the quality of water. Hmm. And a lot of people are stuck. They don't have a good flow in that area in the body, and that that affects their ability to communicate and to have intimacy and to flow and to dance you know it's a very mm -hmm. it's all about move, movement in that area and um then you have the third eye chakra for example in between the eyes and that that area is very sensitive to uh, intuitive messages uh, visions so if you if you never had a vision in your life if you ne you just went through your life you just do your job you do your chores you do you you, you cover your responsibilities for your family, for society, but you never ever had any vision about yourself or about others. You never had a, an image in your mind in a dream or during the day, an image, a vision, seeing yourself or seeing your society or your community doing something different than the regular chores that you go through. If you never had that any kind of vision, that means that the energy in your third eye chakra is stag stagnant. Mm -hmm. It's stuck. It's not flowing. It's there, but you're just not aware of it. You're not really letting it flow. Uh, and so th the music that I composed for the third chakra very much resonates in that area of the body and awakens the energy in the third chakra area. And the guided meditation tells the listener what to think, what to imagine in order to awaken that quality that we all have. We all have the ability to be intuitive because we are all animals and all animals have the capacity for intuition. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's hold your thought, hold it. your thought, Yuval, hold your thought. We're going to go into a station break and we're going to be back again with Yuval Ron, composer peace activist, sound healer, The Cutting Edge of Conscious Radio, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. 
Own Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organisation, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. With happy clients all over the world, Kara Johnstad knows that your voice is the missing link to more authenticity, abundance, creativity, and health. An internationally acclaimed voice expert, Kara's breakthrough methods have helped thousands of people successfully heal their voice wounds and extinguish the story of self-doubt and shyness forever. Join in group trainings, attend online sessions, schedule one-on-one -on -one time, and invite Kara to work with your organization and community. Get started today. Go to www.karajohnstad.com and receive a special guided meditation designed to fine-tune your inner voice and welcome you on the voice journey. Hi, this is recording artist and composer Yuval Ram inviting you to a voyage through the chakras, a new double album of guided meditations to transform your life, a sublime musical medicine for nourishing inner peace and reaching to your higher virtues. Get it now at metamindfulnessmusic.com, M-E-T-T-A, mindfulnessmusic.com. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. <laughs> the dad joke. Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. So here we are back again. I'm Cara Johnstead, and this is Voice Rising, and we're back with the world-renowned musician, composer, educator, and peace activist Yuval Ron talking about sound consciousness, music as medicine, and his newest release, A Voyage Through the Chakras. And we had just left off with Yuval sharing with us about the chakra system, and I am curious as a singer, Yuval, I'm so curious about this question because I have my own theories. I'm curious, we have the root of the scale and we also have the root chakra. And in music theory, for those of you out there that are musicians, we have that perfect fifth and that's kind of the, the tone that you hear at the beginning of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or, you know, if you go ba 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 ba, right? And um, and that's this frequency, the ratio of three, you know, three to two. There's little seven semitones in there as we have seven chakras. So what I find really fascinating is that the root chakra and the fifth chakra, which is also for my training, I, I know there are many, many different systems of, of um, scales all over the world, but also of harmonics, it's, it's the root and the fifth is a very stable and very important part of music and if you look at our chakras it's also the entrance basically to our core right so everyone puts a lot of different weight on heart chakras and third eye chakras and and all the chakras are important of course for us to stay in balance but of course i'm a singer and i want to ask you what do you yeah. see as the correlations? Because for me, the entrances, the holes, as I call them, is also, they're also very holy. They, they make us whole. I mean, if we, if we find yeah. our inner voice, if we, if we um, 
also there are many traditions also through sexuality right so the root chakra and the fifth chakra are they linked in your eyes with all your studies of of music and vibration and harmony is there a a link between the one and the five just like there is in music yes the interesting thing this is a fascinating question uh, i'm glad you you bring it out and mm -hmm. uh, what is really fascinating is the the root chakra is in the base of the spine it's so when we sit on the floor when we sit right on the mm -hmm. floor cross-legged the mm -hmm. bottom of our spine touches the earth and this is the foundation okay this is mm -hmm. the lowest place it it's it represents the connection to the earth and the foundation. Uh, the reason why it's in the in, in that area, in in the bottom, like in around our tailbone, mm -hmm. is that th this is the the first end opening that we have in our body, in the goings that we have an opening, uh, and and there's a flow of air, you know, just like there's a flow of mm -hmm. air from our mouth, there's a flow of air in the bottom of our tailbone. There's an opening there. And so we are like a flute, you know, in the Sufi mm -hmm. tradition, there's mm -hmm. a teaching that uh, we we are the instrument. We are just like a flute, and mm -hmm. we should be a good, empty vessel. Like a, a good flute is an open pipe. If mm -hmm. you don't clear, if you don't clear a flute, you cannot blow through it. If there's something right. that blocks the flow of air, that right. doesn't make a good sound. So you need, as a human being, you need to be clear of obstacles mm -hmm. so right. the vibrations can flow through you. So it starts with that. And then the fifth chakra is right in the throat. The fifth chakra it has to do with voice. Mm -hmm. So it starts, for, it starts from breath, but it's the, the lower and the energy. The energy starts from the lower chakra, the energy rises from the lower chakra. It comes from the earth, but it's also associated with breath, with an opening for air, not from necessarily from your air from your nose, but air from the earth, from the lower opening. There's a rising of air, rising of energy, and then when it reaches to the fifth chakra, which is the throat, that's where you are communicating. That's where you work with your breath. But you need to breathe deeply from down below. If you just breathe from your throat or if you just breathe from your chest, as you know, as a singer, that's a very shallow breath. You need to breathe from down below, breathe from the belly, bring it from the diaphragm, from below. So all the energy comes from below, and then we are able to express. That's the throat chakra is the quality of expression and to be truthful, to be able to communicate freely truth. So to be authentic, to be truthful, and to be free, to have freedom of expression through your voice, that is all in the throat chakra. So it's very interesting indeed that those are, they have the relationship of one, the first chakra, and the fifth, which is the throat chakra. And they are related, just like in music, the root and the fifth. Yeah, it's it's a really fascinating theme for me because the, we also have the cervical spine, which is in the throat area. As women, we have the cervix. So you find a lot of the, mm -hmm. you find a lot of the deep connections. And I'm always yeah. saying to my students, um, although I I do you know enjoy deep and low and wide breath, but the fascinating thing about the voice is that it does not like a lot of pressure. And so there's one exercise I do a lot, which is just to exhale and then to sing without inhaling. <laughs> so you're really yes. working on emptying, uh -huh. emptying, emptying, emptying. And what a lot of people don't yeah. realize is that the emptier you are, and that's what you were talking about, this feeling of the hollow bamboo, this feeling of being an instrument, a vertical instrument connecting the yeah. mind, you know, heaven to earth, on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, just really to uh -huh. understand that channel um, that the emptier we are, the fuller the sound becomes. And, and this is, for me, this fascinating paradox of, well, we, with the em yeah, we empty to become full of that cosmic, mm -hmm. glorious, beautiful energy. And that, for me, is mm -hmm. this sound mind, sound body, which is when you are whole and in balance and full of integrity and one with your truth, then you are sound. I mean, we, we have the language to express 
what we're all seeking, but we at times forget that the path is sound <laughs> as we're all running after yeah. the next thing. But the path is sound, yeah. and that sound we have with us 24-7, that ability to whistle, to hum, to sing, um, you know. So now I'm getting carried away because I'm getting so excited to talk uh, to you. But I would like to share with our audience a track I would like to share the guided meditation track just a few moments just a few minutes you know there are 10 minutes a week maybe three three or four minutes of the throat um, because of course in honor of of my love for uh, voice um, the throat sure. uh, guided meditation track yeah the chakra yeah that's yeah. feature it's jazz flugelhorn trumpet um, and I chose the flugelhorn trumpet and the, the jazzy element because, for me, jazz is all about expression, yeah. authentic expression. So I was thinking about the trumpet as a the flugelhorn, which is a special kind of trumpet. I thought about it as a perfect instrument to express uh, the throat chakra. So, it's very uh, funny because in, in German, flugel, flugelhorn, but flugel means wings. Now wings. that you're saying that, no. wings, the, um, the, a wing horn, it, it's like a, something that has wings. And I think of the throat chakra, I think of a bird and, and voice, of course. And when you say flugelhorn, it's, it's yeah, kind of funny it's because a flugel is, yeah, and, and, and Vogel hat ein Flügel, a bird has wings, it has, has flugel. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Great. So do we have that track? Welcome to your throat chakra, the center of truth and expressiveness. Take three deep breaths. Place your attention on your throat chakra and spin the turquoise energy center clockwise. We open our throat chakra to communicate with beings living and gone, to inspire others on the earth, to contact the great expanses of turquoise blue, like the sea, like the sky, like space that stretch seemingly into infinity, but are the spaces and shores that exist inside us. Dive into the turquoise chakra that spins at your throat. If you let it, it will spin you into a being of truth. You now dare to be yourself, to speak your truth out into the world and to your nearest and dearest. You let the cozy cloak of pretense go and reveal yourself as your authentic self. You will expand your life. You will write your truth with the living of your life. And with right action, your creations will reach their full potential. And you will shine with the light of illumination of your truth. You need not defend or explain yourself. When you speak your truth, the truth is the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You will realize that you... Wow, powerful, powerful words. I am Cara Johnson, yeah. and you are at voice rising right and i'm here in studio for those of you that may be joining us now with 
the composer, educator, peace activist Yuval Ron listening to tracks off of his newest release, Voyage Through the Chakras. And the voice that you heard on that guided meditation was the voice of the actress and producer Lucinda Clare talking about the throat chakra. Powerful, Yuval. You are, you are really bringing out magical uh, music, I guess, that we can see also as medicine, meaning medicine in the word. And it, the meaning of medicine is actually to, to prevent us from becoming ill. Right? It's not to yeah. give us a pill after we're ill. Actually, the true word of the word medicine it means actually that we won't become ill, as right. far as I understand the word, right? Yeah, and, and the ancient, uh, all the traditional alternative medicine is all preventive. You know? Chinese right. medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, it's, it's having the right lifestyle to prevent uh, illness before it happens. Right, exactly. So I see that in a lot of your work, um, although you are, of course, playing all the stringed instruments and everything and composing and, and writing, but you do have this great gift to bring people towards finding their inner voice. I, I know that you're doing a big event in Los Angeles between the holidays. What is, what? is Why is that so dominant for you, this theme or or this this yearning to find your true authenticity or to find your true expression, to find your true voice? Uh, that's a great question. You know, I, I, <laughs> I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, been asked that question. I, I, and I never asked myself um, this question. And, and I think that the first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that I am a performing artist. And the fact mm -hmm. that when I when I go on stage, for example, I I rarely I, I was ne I, I almost never ever speak to the audience. I, I don't even say good evening uh, because I feel that I must start with sound first. So I always I always speak to the audience after the first song, mm -hmm. but I ha I have to start with music. Uh, I could start with words because I, I'm a lecturer. I give lectures in many, many universities around the world. I go and I teach. I give master classes. I give talks. I give keynote addresses in international conferences on music and medicine. And uh, I, I, I'm a speaker. People hire me to give talks in universities. So mm -hmm. I do not have any problem speaking. But when I give a concert, I feel that Starting with sound is attuning myself and the audience. Sound and finding the inner voice, finding the authentic inner voice to to go to come from as a performer, as a as a musician. That is the task. That is where I want to be. I feel that I I want to be speaking. Play from an authentic place. So I, before I start playing, I sit on the stage and I do three part, I do three part meditation, which comes from ancient India. And I speak about that in my book, uh, Divine Attunement. Uh, I wrote in one of the chapters that uh, a great master musician from India once told me that uh, the way they do it, and that's the way I do it now uh, over my career, is you sit on the stage, and before you play the first note, you are quieting the audience, meaning you, you are, with your mind, you are focusing on the audience, and you try to quiet the audience down. So you send a, a message, you send a very peaceful wave of concentration of stillness be still be still be still and a very quiet wave that you send to the audience and then you send it to yourself you quiet yourself and then you wait for stillness in the space between you and the audience so you focus on the audience you focus on yourself and you focus on the space 
And when there is that moment of stillness in the air, you start playing the music from that. So the sound comes out of the void. The sound comes out of the blank page. The sound comes out of nothingness. This is the, the idea of creation. The creation mm -hmm. of the world started from emptiness, from the void, from the still, still place comes creation. So that's how I do it. And when I do it like that in concerts, and I search for the inner voice, so when, when, when I get to the stillness, before I play the first note, I try to hear an inner voice and to express it through my instrument, through my string instrument, the oud. So I listen inside once I reach the stillness. Then I hear a certain inner voice, a certain sound, like, bah. And I try to express that bah, through <laughs> my instrument, through my instrument. And then the first note that I play leads to the second note, and the second note leads to, the sound leads to another sound. It's a chain chain of inspiration. And so I play that first piece with my ensemble. Usually I, I play with with my ensemble, and we finish the first song, and then I speak to the audience, and I feel that the music attune me. So I, when I speak to the audience in, in between the first and the second song, I speak from that deep place that we found with the sound, with the music. And so my, my words are more in tune to the inner voice than if I were coming from the green room, from the changing room, going on stage and with excitement or with the drive or, or the... The, the energy of going on stage, uh, speaking uh, instead of speaking from that place, now I'm speaking, after the first song, I'm speaking from that place of stillness and harmony and attuneness that the sound took me to. You see, that's the reason why I usually never speak before the first sound. That's very beautiful. And if I would have known that, I would have hummed for you. Conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, this is New Age Grammy winner Paul Avgerinos. Thanks for listening to Ohm Times Radio, and please support my peaceful healing music with a purchase at iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you shop for fine music. Just put my name into the search engine. Paul Avgerinos. A, V like Victor, G like George, E, R, I, N, O, S. You can also visit me at roundskymusic.com. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you the brightest of blessings. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. 
Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Hello, everybody. We're back here today in studio with you, Val Ron, and we were listening and talking about song consciousness, music as medicine, and we're listening into his beautiful album, which is a new release called Voyage Through the Chakras. And I have this another another question for you, Val, because I'm just so curious, and, and you live such an amazing life. There's a beautiful Rumi quote, and I know you know it, and it says, Today, like every every other day, we wake up empty and frightened. Don't open the door to the study and begin reading. Take down a musical instrument and let the beauty we love be what we do. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. And so my question for you is that you're a musician and, and you already shared with us that you really enjoy those morning hours to compose and write and and connect in the quietude for with your musical instrument and you're also doing a lot of concerts is there for you a difference between actively participating and touching and being with an instrument or passively but also in a way actively listening to music that is streaming into our ears because you know, and we have many different parts that we live as musicians. We have that concert experience, that active experience, and we also have the production that we bring music to other people. Would you encourage every single person to learn an instrument? Is it, or is it just simply like two different streams that we can connect with our heart through good music? We can connect through our heart through doing our own music. And do you get where the question you is, know, or am I being yeah. a little? <laughs> No, Carl, this is a great question because it's opened the, the door to some research that uh, I've looked into. And uh, I've been fortunate in the last 11 years to collaborate with neuroscientists in the United States who are on the cutting edge of uh, researching the brain and what happens in the brain when you do music, what happens in the brain when you listen to music. So this mm. is exactly answering your question from the, from the latest uh, Western science, and uh, I've I've written a curriculum for Esalen Institute in California, which I've been teaching the last 11 years, in with the neuroscientists. So I collaborated on creating that uh, cu curriculum, and I had to learn from the neuroscientists about their studies. And so, what is uh, really uh, interesting is that the brain of a musician is different than a normal brain, and a brain of a meditator is different than a, a normal brain. And it's not because you were born a musician, it's not because you were born a meditator. The changes in the brain are, are created because of lifelong music making or because of lifelong meditating. It takes time, but the, the changes in the brain are very clear. So what that research shows us is that it is very good to listen to music. So music stimulates many parts of our brain. It's not just the emotional part of our brain. It's not just our memories. It's, it stimulates our analytical side of our brain and our oral centers in the brain and the, the, uh, both the right and the left sides of the brain. They're all active when you listen to music. But when you make music, when you just sit at the piano, when you just play the drum, there are more areas of the brain that are involved. So the benefits for participating in music making or singing along a track or dancing along and singing along with the music that you listen to are far greater than just sitting and listening. So uh, sitting and listening is very good for your brain. It's, it's developing it. But what we do in our healing sound CDs, which is a part of a, a uh, series of, that comes out on a record company called Meta with two T's, Meta Mindfulness Music. That's the record company that put out all of my healing sound CDs. What we recommend in the liner notes in those albums, we always ask people to do something with while listening to the music. So for example, 
when we put out a four uh, CDs album, four discs album for the doshas, uh, it's called The Healing Sounds of the Doshas of our Vedic Medicine, the medicine from India. Uh, we ask people to to chant and to sound the sound of Om in three different ways, the three different ways uh, with three different musical tracks. Uh, we also, uh, when we did uh, the series that you talked about, the, the album Wood, Wood is part mm-hmm. of the element, seven part CDs album, which is all also available digitally, of course. So there's water, wood, fire, earth, uh, metal, and triple warmer. There are all the six elements, uh, in according to Qigong and traditional Chinese medicine. We gave people certain breathing sounds that are associated with each of those elements. So there's a sound for water. There's a sound for wood. So we ask people while they listen to mu- to the music, if they can, to do to make the sound along while listening. There's also mental affirmations that we give people to chant and meditate on. So we try to get people to hum along, sing along, even if they're not musicians. You don't have to be a musician to just make a tone with your voice, one tone along with the music. So all that is more beneficial. If if a person... Now, I, I, I've been teaching music since I was 16 years old, uh, teaching private students, and I still have a few private students that study with me. And I've seen numerous students that have no musical talent, absolutely no ear, no musical talent. They love music, but they're almost, almost pitch deaf. They almost cannot <laughs> hear uh, the difference between different tones, or they have no sense of rhythm. And over time, because they wanted it, they really love music, but they have no talent. But, of course, I don't tell them that. I don't tell them. I encourage them to work hard and to practice. And when they practice, when those students practice, they reach a level of skill that they can play music. So you don't even need a, a talent to play a musical instrument. You can reach a certain level if you practice. And so everybody can play music. And when you go to schools, for example, my children are in a Waldorf school, which comes from Germany, from Rudolf Steiner, mm-hmm. who created those Waldorf curriculum uh, about 100 years ago in Germany. And in a Waldorf curriculum, every child in third grade, no matter, no matter if they're talented, no matter if they like music or they don't like music, every child is learning to play the violin or cello or viola. All the children play in, in a string orchestra. Every child. It's like a music school. But every child goes to school twice a week with a violin and learns to play the violin. In fifth grade, every child learned to play a woodwind instrument, a flute mm-hmm. or clarinet or trumpet, saxophone. Every child, just like every child sing in the choir of the school. So there's music all around. Now, they do that in the world of curriculum. They don't do that because they want everybody to be musicians. It will be a horrible world if everybody everybody will want, everybody in the world will want to work in an orchestra. And nobody's going to want to be a, 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 an engineer, a, a civil engineer. <laughs> Nobody will want to build roads. Everybody will want to be a musician. No, that's not the intention. The intention is that music develops the brain and develops motor skills and thinking skills. So the kids, and now uh, modern science showing us, and in my book, I, I indicated in, uh, in my book, there's a, over 100 footnotes to scientific studies that I collected that I'm pointing out in my book. Contemporary science shows that children who do music are doing better in language studies and in math. They do better. They're healthier. Their brain is healthier. So Rudolf Steiner, when he indicated that music must be taught to every child, he knew before the scientific uh, uh, studies came. He knew 100 years ago. He knew it by instinct, by observation. He, He found out and he knew that 
music is a great developmental tool for the brain and for the bodies of young children. It's, it's a very, very, very important uh, training. So, um, unfortunately, music and the arts were, have been cut from education all over the world. Uh, I've seen it in Israel. I've seen it in America. And this, this really impoverished the education. It impoverished the level of the students on a whole. So few wealthy kids get private lessons in the normal, in the regular schools, the regular uh, communities. Some wealthy kids get um, edu music education because their parents can afford it and the parents are aware that it's, it's good for the kids to study and they hired three or four private stu uh, uh, um, teachers. Teachers, but, yeah. But teachers for the kids, but but the but the the rest of the kids, especially in poor neighborhoods, they don't get they, they don't get music education because the schools don't provide it. The regular schools don't provide it, and so we're impoverishing uh, our children. Uh, it used to be in America in the 50s and in the 60s that every child would have music uh, education. Every child would learn about music. Yeah. We're coming to the close of our show, Yuval. The time just flew by. I want to thank you so much for being here with me, for all of those people out there that would love to get to know more about Yuval Ron's music. I believe your homepage is, so maybe you say it quickly, underneath this music, YuvalRonMusic.com, is that correct? Yes, uh, it's YuvalRonMusic.com. Okay. Spelled Y U V A L R O N yeah. music. You can also look at Meta Mindfulness music. Meta with exactly. I will put this all up wherever the interview is to be found. I want to thank.